pretty face, funny hat. That's what my blondie is. Lovable feet, both flat. That's what my Dagwood is. Blondie's not always right. I let her think she is. All of my thoughts are bright. Long as he thinks they're his. Life for us is fun and crazy. Baby Duffling. Us and Daisy. What a family. Incredible. Bumsteadable. <laughs> Hurry, you'll miss your butt. Watch out, you'll burn your stew. Nothing's too much for us. As long as with me there's you. Dagwood and Blondie. Blondie and Dagwood. Always with me there's you. She's afraid of the stork. Stork? Is the stork coming to your house? Yeah. See that? Yeah, what is it? It's a trap going up in the tree there. And when the stork comes, I'm going to catch it. What for? If he hasn't got a baby girl, I'm going to make him take it back. Why are you so anxious to have a girl? There's enough men in this family, and I'm tired of doing dishes. I'm going to work any day now, and I won't have any time. Well, see you later. So long. Baby dumpling, baby dumpling. I can hear you. Don't be hollering so loud. Oh, excuse me. Is your mother asleep? I don't know, but she's lying down. But listen, baby dumpling. Just a minute. I've been meaning to bring this up for a long time. What? That baby dumpling stuff is out. From now on, my name is Alexander. Oh, but I like baby dumpling. I like chocolate ice cream soda, too. But I don't get it all the time. What did you want to see me about? Anything special? Oh, yes. This boy told me to ask you why you weren't at Sunday school yesterday. I had to help Daddy with the housework. You missed an awfully nice lesson. It was all about Moses when he was a little baby. The stork left him in the bulrushes. Bulrushes? I wonder if I'm setting up this trap in the right place. Once more, the ring of baby laughter is about to echo through the house. Once more, the gurgling and cooing of the little stranger in your midst will set your heart a dancing. Once more... Listen, Bumstead. Oh. If you read that tripe once more, so help me, your kids are going to be fatherless. Oh. Oh. Gee, Ollie, when your second baby was on its way, didn't it make you feel sort of good? Yeah, good and worried. I had bills up to here. Yeah? Yeah. And after the baby came, more bills up to here. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, uh, there's some literature on construction. Oh. Yes, Mr. Dithers? Uh, Dagwood, bring in those figures on the Murphy deal. Right away, Mr. Dithers. One of the most thrilling experiences in a man's life comes at that moment when he carries his baby in his arms across the threshold of his home. Boy, when he carries his little baby in his arms. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> <Kuchu, kuchu, kuchu. laughs> when he carries his baby in his arm across the threshold of his home. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry. What do you think you're I'm, doing? I was just practicing carrying the baby across the thing. Now, listen here, Dagwood. For months, you've been running around acting like a chicken with his head cut off. Well. Now, I appreciate your emotions. I, I know what you're going through. Uh, but when you start disrupting my office, neglecting your work, and making a pest of yourself, my sympathy ends. Now, you've got to forget that baby and come down to earth. Gee, Mr. Dennis, how can I forget about the baby? It'll be here any day now. But you won't be here if you persist in making my men part of a pediatric quiz program. Uh, I was just comparing notes with the two-time fathers. <laughs> well, just don't compare them on my time. I'll get your figures and come into my office. Oh, okay, J.C. Oh, Mr. Dithers. Yes? Uh, can I think about the baby just a little bit, huh? Yes, on your lunch hour. Uh, oh. Yeah. Why, hello, Mr. Crum. Hello, George. I thought you had a route in the suburbs. Well, I have, but there's a fellow out there named a Bumstead that's been running into me every morning for years. Every time I deliver the mail, bang, he hits me. 
Well, what are you doing around here? Well, I don't deliver the mail at his house at all anymore. You don't? No, instead I deliver it here at his office. It's added 10 years to my life. <laughs> you know, I haven't been knocked down in weeks. So long, George. So long. But aren't these the same figures we discussed last week? Uh, yes, sir, but you well, see... good heavens, you haven't incorporated the changes I made. Uh, yes, sir, but you see... What do you do all day in the office? Knit booties? Uh, yes, sir, but you... Oh, no. Oh, here. Oh, oh no, here. Yes? Oh, it's for you. Huh? Just take your time. Hello? Hello? Hello, Daddy? Is this Daddy? Hello, yes, yeah, Baby Dumpling? Oh, where's Mommy? Has anything happened? Yes, plenty. Well, is Mommy all right? No, she's busy with the babies. Babies? Did you say baby or babies? Babies. How many? Five. Five? What's up? We got quintuplets. He's got an accomplice. to feed. What's he so disappointed about? Maybe he expected more. Oh. Well, where's Blondie? She's with the babies. Oh. oh, no, no. In the kitchen on the floor. Oh. Blondie, shouldn't you be in bed? Oh. Five puppies. <laughs> I guess I'm getting as keyed up as Dagwood is. That isn't possible. Oh, he's all of a dither, Mr. Dithers. And when he's all of a dither, I am. Why, this morning at breakfast, he tried to toast the oranges. I can't stand things like that at a time like this. Take it easy, Blondie. Now, you'll be all right. Of course I'll be all right. I'd be all right now if people would only stop fussing about me. It's Dagwood that's coming apart, Mr. Dithers. You'd think he was having the baby. Sometimes I'm afraid he isn't going to be able to go through with it. Nonsense, Blondie. Well, you're just letting him make you nervous. Well, you've got to be like me. Now, I have him around all day long. I don't let him make me nervous. What am I doing here? But you don't know what he's like at home. And if he isn't able to stand the strain, Mr. Dithers, I mean, if anything should happen to him, I'd never forgive myself. Oh, there, there, Blondie. Now, maybe we can get him away for a bit, where he can sort of forget himself. Oh, that'd be wonderful. See, my sister-in-law has left. Now, maybe I could have him at my house. No, I couldn't have him at my house. Oh, no, no. That'd be too near. He'd be coming home here all the time. That's right. Somewhere farther, much farther. I've got it. I'll send him to Chicago. Oh, oh, Mr. Dithers, how can I ever thank you? Don't. I can't tell you how glad I am to do it. Oh. Uh, where have you been, my pretty maid? We just had puppies. <laughs> well, congratulations. Did you hear that, fellas? Dagwood just had puppies. Well, when are you going to pass out the cigars? Not cigars, dog biscuits. <laughs> uh, Mr. Bumstead, as the father of five puppies, have you a statement to make for the press? Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, oh. I'm sorry, Mr. Jiddy. You see, the boys... Come into my office. Oh, I'm sorry I ran off, J.C. 
Please, Mr. Dithis, please don't fire me. I, I've got ten mouths to feed. Well, just keep one of them closed. I'm only sending you to Chicago. Oh, I thought you were sending... Chicago? Oh, <laughs> I thought you were going to fire me. The National Association of Architects is holding its convention there, and well, I want you to represent me. Well, th th that's wonderful. Will you just make a simple speech at the banquet and... Uh... Speech? <laughs> What'll I say? Well, just a few words and sit down. I'll have something written for you. No, you write your own speech when you get there. Give you something to think about. Oh, I, I don't think I'd be able to think. What are we talking about? I can't go to Chicago. No? Of course not. Blondie needs me. <laughs> we'll see what she had to say about that. Well, I'd be a fine husband to leave her now. Well, why, I'm her pillar of strength. Oh, no. I wouldn't go, even if it meant resigning from the J.C. Dithers Company. All right, you asked for it. Uh -huh. Either you do go or you're... No, 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 don't, don't say it. <laughs> think of my ten mouths. You think of them. Huh? Now I'll give you ten minutes to do it in. How long? Nine and a half. Start thinking. Don't forget to write to me every day, Dagwood. Uh, I will. Oh. And kiss baby Dumpling goodbye for me. I will, darling. <laughs> oh, Dagwood, you're late. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Bye. What a... Oh. Uh oh. Stop worrying. It works. What a... Oh, oh Dagwood, huh? don't be so silly. Now, come on, stop playing. Where am I? Come on. Whose snoot is this? Oh. <laughs> Architects, looking at your faces, I am reminded of a joke. It, oh. oh. Fellow architects, we have gathered today in this great, big, beautiful city of Chicago with its magnificent buildings, its lovely streets, its pretty homes, children and babies. <laughs> oh, babies. Oh. Fellow architects, when I was a little boy, I used to say, uh, what did I used to say? Oh, <clears throat> fellow architects, we have gathered here in this beautiful city of Chicago. I used to say... Mr. Wickley. Yes, who is it? The waiter, Mr. Wickley. Oh, but you didn't bring my dinner. Uh, no, sir, but I brought you the bill. Oh, but no dinner. Uh, no, sir. Mm. The manager asked me to tell you that there aren't any more dinners until you pay that. Oh, he did, did he? Yes. Well, does he realize that I am George Wickley, the playwright? That the very play I'm working on now will bring a fortune? That the moment I finish the drama that I'm working on now, I'll be a wealthy man? But then I suggest you finish it. But does it mean nothing that I've lived here for years? Well, almost a year. Does it mean nothing that... Nothing. Nothing. Once, I was the idol of women. Once, I was the envy of men. And now, I'm hungry. No, I mean, uh, now I'm old. Oh. How can I battle life further? How can I hope to cope with... Cope to hope? Hope to overcome the sneers of men and the scorn of women. Fellow architect, will you take your pen in hand and night. draw your plans on, on the blue the plate? I mean, a blueprint. You have to decide. It's too much. Why pretend any longer? I've been through. Done. What have you decided? Death huh? would be a welcome visitor. Death is my friend. He wouldn't laugh at me. Ha <laughs> ha. But why wait for death to call? I'll go to death. Meet him. Why wait for him to come? Embrace him. That's what I do. I'll go to meet death. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. I don't do that. Oh, oh, don't kill yourself. What's the idea? Let go of me. Let go. Do you promise not to jump out? You big fool. All right, all right, I promise. Release me. If you kill yourself, you'd be sorry for it the rest of your life. Who said I was going to kill myself? You did. You just said you were going to meet death. I didn't say that. My hero said that. Hero? My good man, I am a playwright. Playwright? Oh, you mean you write plays? I also act. You mean you act? I often create my scenes here in the corridors. Gives me more room in which to think. 
I uh, think better walking in circles. <laughs> I was just uh, doing a little creating, too. <laughs> a speech. Really? Uh, Good night. Good night, Mr. Uh, uh, Weekly. George Weekly. Yeah. I brought everything you asked for, Mr. Bumstead. Oh, uh, thanks. <laughs> um, I was just going to fix a little sandwich for myself. Sort of a Bumstead special. <laughs> Uh, just put it on the table in my room. Yes, sir. Thanks. Uh, making yourself a little sandwich, what? <laughs> yeah. Well, good night. Oh, I say, Mr. Bumstar. Uh, no, Bumstead. Dagwood Bumstead. Oh, I'm sorry. I just happened to think, uh, uh, perhaps I could help you with your speech. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. Oh, uh, not at all, not at all. After all, writing is my bread and butter, you know. Uh -huh. Well, uh, I think that'd be wonderful. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Let's work in your room, what? Oh, sure. <laughs> you know, I like meeting people, studying them. And you, Mr. Bumstead, interest me greatly. Would you uh, oh. sign for the tray, Mr. Bumstead? Yes. There you are. And uh, here's a little something for the kiddies. <laughs> Do you have to be such a vulture? For 50 cents, I'll vouch. Thank you, sir. And if you need any more food, just send for me. <laughs> the food here was, uh, is delicious, Mr. Bumstead. Oh, that's nice. Now about this speech I'm writing. I'm writing. You just go ahead and make your sandwich. Oh, but I'm not hungry. Uh, um, you see, this creating seems to take my appetite away. Oh, really? Uh, you know, that's odd. I always seem to create better when I, right after I've eaten. Yeah. Oh, th then you'd better eat the sandwich. Oh, no, I couldn't think of it. Huh? But, but, but if you write better, oh, please, you, you eat it, Mr. Wickley. Well, if you insist. You ought to write good now, huh? Well, at least better. Yeah. Tell me, what is our little speech? Oh, it's for the architect's convention next week. You know about architects. Architects. Uh -huh. Building. Homes. Home may not be the boundary of our affections, but it should be the center. Gee, that's swell. Put it down, put it down. Yeah. And in bygone days, a man might express that affection in the style and design of the dwelling that was to shelter his loved ones. <laughs> Guys. Fortunately, we can still return to that era. The era of the pioneers, spread out over this glorious land of ours. Learn again the beauty of the earth and the sky. Conceive our own vision of our dwelling and build it ourselves. That's it, Bumstead. That's our theme. Build your own home. Be your own architect. That's wonderful. But do you think the architects are like that? Why not? Even architects must be responsive to new ideas. Uh, well, anyone can say the usual things. You want your speech to be outstanding. Yeah, that's so. And that ought to knock them right out of their seat. Sure it will. And we'll round it out during the week. Yeah. Oh, hadn't we better get it done tonight? Oh, no. No use pressing. It'll flow better if we don't. And don't worry about my deserting you on it. Oh, no. I'll be seeing you morning, noon, and night. Oh. I wish you could meet Blondie. I, she'd want to thank you, too. Say, maybe someday when you're touring with one of your plays, you could stop off in our town and meet the family, huh? That'd be nice. <laughs> oh, you'd like Blondie and Baby Dumpling. <laughs> Dumpling? Yeah. Baby Dumpling oh. and Daisy and our new baby <laughs> and our new five little puppies. I'm sure I should. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Be your own architect. <laughs> Wait till Mr. Dithers hears about this. I bet you'll be glad when your mother gets home from the hospital. I sure will. A woman works from sun to sun, but a man's work is never done. See what I mean? Goes on like that all day. Oh, hello, baby dumpling. Oh, hello, Daddy. Where are you? 
At the station. Better not tell him on the phone. Better break it to him easy. Hey, how's Mommy? Mommy, uh, she's lying down. That's true. Oh, that's fine. You tell her I'll be right home. All right, Daddy. We'll be waiting for you. Goodbye. I feel like a heel. It's better than having him come apart at the station. I'll call a cab. Where are we going? To take Daddy to the hospital. He'd kill himself getting there alone. Seven hundred and ninety-two, seven hundred and ninety-three, seven hundred and ninety... What are you counting? How many trips you make back and forth? Oh, was I going back and forth? <laughs> There's one thing I can't get through my head. What? Why does the stork have to come to the hospital? Because your mother is here at the hospital, and wherever your mother is, that's where the baby is going to be delivered. Why? You're too young to know. I am not. Well, because... Because... Um, ask your father. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. Uh, what, what do you want to know, huh? I want to know why Mommy couldn't have stayed home. Well, uh, oh, oh, she could have. Then why didn't she? The Stark's liable to get all mixed up looking for this hospital. We had a hard time finding it ourselves. Well, Mommy had to be at the hospital because the baby's going to be delivered here. <laughs> Alan just said that the baby has to be delivered at the hospital because Mommy's here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the same thing. Huh? Oh, no, it isn't. Huh? Doesn't the Stark know where we live or does he work for this hospital? Uh, well, uh, now, uh, well, now I'll tell you. You see, there uh, isn't really a stork. Uh, that is, a stork that flies and things. Uh, <clears throat> now, listen carefully, baby dumpling. Alexander. Oh, I'm sorry, Alexander. Uh, do you know how flowers grow? In the ground. You mean to tell no, me you're going to... No, 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 wait. Uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is, do you know how flowers start? <laughs> uh-uh. Do you? Oh, sure. Uh, that is, I think I do. <clears throat> There uh, are different kinds of flowers, and the dust from one flower blows on the other flower. Pollen. What'd you say? Pollen. It's not dust. It's pollen. I know that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I tell you what we'll do. We'll uh, talk about uh, bees. <clears throat> I'm asking about babies. Yeah, well, never mind. <clears throat> There are uh, two kinds of bees. Three. Two. Three, the queen bees, the workers, and the drones. The drones don't count. Oh, yes, they do. Oh. Listen, hmm. I don't want to know about flowers, and I don't want to know about it's... bees. You, you be quiet. You're making as much noise as he is. Alvin, why don't you stop heckling Daddy? He's not heckling Daddy. He's bothering Daddy. Well, if you ask me... Nobody's asking you. Shh. Quiet, huh? Are these children with you? <laughs> yes, sir. May I speak to you a moment? What? Uh, oh, yeah, thank you. Oh, no. Now, what do you suppose that's about? Come on, baby. D um, Alexander, come on, Alvin. Have to go. Daddy, huh? what's that man in the white suit want? Well, he wants me to get you kids out of here. You see, children aren't allowed on this floor. Children not allowed on this floor. How do you like that? Why, I was born on this floor, and so is Baby Dumpling. And the sooner you read some good books on child psychology and brush up on how to tell yeah, them... Yeah, never mind. Come on, come Don't on. Don't jerk my arm. I'm coming. Come on. Come on, baby. Please let go of my arm. Shh. Oh, children are allowed on this floor. Mr. Bumstead. Huh? Congratulations, Mr. Bumstead. Oh, you mean... You... Oh, and how's my wife? She's doing splendidly, Mr. Bumstead. And, 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 and the... The baby's doing well, too. Oh, what's the baby's name? I mean, that, that, that's good. Is it a boy or a girl? Yes, is it? It's a seven-pound girl. Oh, gee. No more housework. Can I see my wife? No, I'm sorry. You'll have to wait till tomorrow. Well, then, then maybe I could see... The... I tell you what you do, Mr. Bumstead. Huh? You go home and get yourself some sleep. Yes, I am kind of tired. Of course you are. You've been under a great strain. I know. Come on, kids. I gotta uh... hand it to you, Mr. Bumstead. 
You sure taking it calmly? Of course. I'm always calm in an emergency. You are? Of course I am. That's when we bumpsteads are at our best. We can stand up under any strain. And when the crisis comes, it will always find us on our feet. He did the same thing when I was born. There's a button off my shirt. Well, put it on the chair and I'll sew one on for you. Okay. Did you feed the puppies? I'm going to right now. Okay. Great go. In the vacuum cleaner. Oh. <laughs> Nonsense. How could it be in a vacuum cleaner? It's the silliest thing I ever heard. Huh? What's your... Oh. Oh. There's Elmer. Now, why didn't I look there first? <laughs> Closet, of course. Okay, okay. What'd you want it for? There's a river in the middle of the kitchen. <coughs> That's all right, Daisy. Elmer just upset the milk. <coughs> 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 Blondie. Mommy? Shh, quiet. Uh, oh, no, not you, dear. Uh, huh? What? You mean today? Now? Uh, I'll be right over. Goodbye. Now what's wrong? Oh, there's nothing wrong. Nothing's going to be wrong from now on. We're going to the hospital and get Mommy and we're going to bring her right home. You better take off that apron. Uh, oh, you'd better put on that shirt. Where is it? Oh, uh, it, it's sewed to the chair in the living room. Okay. Yeah. Huh? 
I'll say goodbye now, Blondie. I have to be getting back to the office. Well, it was very sweet of you to come down, Mr. Dithers, especially when you're so busy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, say, J.C., uh, have you heard anything from the Architect Association about uh, my speech? No, I haven't, Dagwood. From what I can gather, Mr. Dithers, they were simply overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I started in by saying, ladies... Uh, never mind about the speech, Dagwood. Uh, the important thing is we got you off to Chicago. <laughs> yeah. Blondie wants to get home with the baby now. Oh. <laughs> I'll be around and see you when he gets settled. <laughs> Goodbye. 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 Come on. Oh. Yeah, no, I can do this. Oh. <laughs> Come on. There. Oh, uh, say, listen. Now, I want you to drive as slowly as possible, and, and I'll double the fare. Mister will practically crawl. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? To a funeral? Well, the folks in the back wanted me to drive slow because they... I don't care what they wanted. You know better than to impede traffic like this. You're responsible for this vehicle, not the passengers. And if that guy back there wants to do any necking with his girl, get him off the main boulevard and take him to a park. Officer, uh, could you lower your voice? Of course I could lower my voice. But why should I? You, you'll wake the baby. The what? No, sh she's asleep. <laughs> Say, that sure is a cute little cookie. <laughs> he yours too. Yeah, but they've had me for years. Well, don't you let little cookie put your nose out of joint. <laughs> now get going. Drive slow, understand? And don't let me catch you bouncing a baby around the way you were. Now, slow. Yes, sir. Gee, Blondie, we're together again. A family that stays that way is invincible. I'm beginning to feel invisible. Why, darling. Here, do you want to take another look at your little sister? <laughs> She's all face. Hey, that's a nice thing to say. Well, she's off a little to dry dishes. Yeah, what'd you expect, a debutante? I didn't expect it at all. Yeah, now, now, see here, Alexander. <coughs> oh, dang, boy, you woke her up. Well, I was just trying to... Oh, shh. <coughs> oh. <laughs> I guess it was just a little gas attack. <laughs> at her age? Shh. Oh. Yeah, I drive it. Keep the change. Thanks, mister. See you next year. What does he mean by that? Well, he just... Well, what do you suppose he did mean by that? Hello, Dagwood. George! How are you, old oh, man? fine. I'm sure glad to see you. Oh, you can make that a double order. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sir. This is the little family you told me about, huh? This is them. I mean, they. I have to speak correctly with a playwright. <laughs> uh, this is my wife, Blondie, and my son, Alexander, and my new baby daughter. <laughs> family, George Wickley. Mrs. Bumstead, I'm most happy to meet you and your little brood. How are you, old man? <laughs> well, I'm so happy to meet you, Mr. Wickley. Dagwood's been talking about you ever since he came back from Chicago. Oh, yeah, I haven't forgotten what you did for oh, me. Oh, nonsense. I enjoyed every bite a uh, minute I had with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dagwood, aren't you going to... Oh, oh, am I? <laughs> now. Come on. Here. Right there. Well, here I go. Oh. Blondie? Blondie, what's she crying for? Oh, she'll be all right, dear. You just take her inside and then give her back to me. Yeah, but Blondie... Here, let me hold her for a minute, huh? Oh, Mr. Wickley, I... Now, now, little Miss Bumstead. She stopped crying. He's enchanted. I'll get it. Huh. 
Dagwood. Hmm? You let a stranger carry our baby across the threshold. Oh, he's not exactly a stranger. He's practically one of the family. One of the family? Uh -huh. Now, you listen to me, Dagwood Bumstead. I've got all the family I want. Oh, now, don't get upset. He isn't staying here. But, well, I should hope not, with all that I have to do right now. Bonnie, you, you don't sound like yourself. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Dagwood. I guess I'm just a little nervous about the baby. Baby! Huh? Oh! Where's Mr. Wickley, Alexander? Uncle George is up in the nursery with Cookie. Oh. <laughs> Uncle George? Uh, Mr. Wickley, huh? uh, you shouldn't dance around with her like that. You'll upset her stomach. Oh, nonsense. All young ladies like to dance, don't they, Dagwood? Huh? <clears throat> oh, oh, really? I suppose you found that out in Chicago. Oh, of course not. You don't think I mix business with pleasure, do you, Blondie? Oh, say, I hope I didn't start anything. My remark was made in all innocence. Oh, you, sure. you do believe me, don't you, Mrs. Bumstead? Oh, call her Blondie. <laughs> By all means, call me Blondie. Uh, well, George, hmm? maybe we'd better go downstairs and leave Blondie with the baby. Oh, anything you say, Dagwood. I I'll see you later, Blondie. <laughs> Dagwood. Uh, you go downstairs and make yourself at home. Huh? Thanks. What is it, dear? Please get rid of him as soon as possible, dear. Well, I have a million things to do. Oh, but I, I gotta be polite. He's an important man. And I'm an important woman with a lot on my mind. Oh, I know you're grateful to him for helping you out, but this is no time to show your appreciation. Invite him back in six months or a year. Oh. Well, can I even ask him to have something to eat? Oh, no, dear. Not tonight. We want to be alone. Oh. Just our little family. <laughs> Just our little family. <laughs> I'll get rid of them. Goodbye, Cookie. <laughs> and you and Baby Dumplin' stop calling her that silly name. I have a whole book of lovely ones to pick from. I'm sorry. Bye. <laughs> well, darling, how do you like your father? Oh, is that any way to talk, Cookie? Cookie. Oh, I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, George. It's quite all right, old man. I made myself at home, as uh, you suggested. Yeah. Oh, this is a great cigar. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, just help yourself. Uh, the humidor will always be open to you. <laughs> Why, dang, would you sound as though I were going to be here indefinitely. Oh, but did I sound like that? You know, Dagwood? I bet I get a lot of work done here. You have such a pleasant, homey place here, and such a wonderful, hospitable little wife. I guess she's grateful, too, huh? Yeah. You know, Dagwood? Mm. She made me feel as if I belonged here. <laughs> she did? Uh, oh, uh, you know, it's a funny thing about that speech, George. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sure I put it over. But you should have heard the silence. <sighs> well, Dagwood, nobody ever applauds revolutionary ideas. Mm. They have to digest them. Oh, yeah. uh, did anyone applaud Columbus when he discovered America? Well, no. Did anyone applaud the Wright brothers when they wanted to fly? Well, I, I don't think so. Oh, you see? Say, Dagwood, mm -hmm. how about a Bumstead special, huh? Oh, I, 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 I don't think so, George. I, sure, sure thing, come on. Well, what a charming kitchen. Yeah, yeah. It's a good thing I got all this stuff last night. I'll bet you knew I was coming. Huh? Oh, no, not exactly. Well, the loyal family mastiff, eh? How are you, old man? Well, what's the matter, boy? Daisy's trying to tell you she's a girl. I see. Well, I'm sorry, Daisy. I apologize. Wow, a feast fit for a king. <laughs> now, if I had something cold to drink... Just browse around the icebox.
puppy's milk while I'm around. Oh, I'm sorry, Daisy. I had no idea that was a puppy's milk. Yeah, I guess I had a little accident. You better take a little walk, Dagwood. Uh, oh, no. I'd better tidy up here a little oh, bit. No, here. no, I'll do it, dear. Huh? You might dip over the ice box. Come on, Dagwood, let's take a walk. I'd like to get acquainted with the neighbor. Yes. Yeah. What did you say, Mr. Wickley? I said I'd like to get acquainted with the neighbor. If I'm going to stay here, I think oh, I no, ought no. to. No, no. <laughs> let's go, George. <laughs> let's take a little walk. Team. He puts shirts in our laundry. He has Alexander waiting on him, hand and foot. He uses my guest towels. He sings in the shower. And Daisy has to be kept outside all the time so they won't fight. He tickles the baby. He argues with the grocery boy. He wears your ties. And he calls New York every other day about his play. He calls long distance? Wait till you see the bill. <laughs> well, I guess he has overstayed his welcome. Alexander, you go tell Mr. Wickley to come down to the living room at once. Is he going away, Daddy? Hmm. Alexander, do as your father says. Yeah. Well. You, you're really going to ask him to go? Oh, I certainly am. Well, now you're showing some spirit. Yeah. I was afraid that you were afraid of him. If, me afraid of George? In a few minutes, George will be out of your house forever. He calls long distance, huh? Morning, Dagwood. Morning, George. Alexander said you wanted to see me. I do. What about Dagwood? Well, uh, I was, uh... Oh, thanks. Yeah. And the humidor is locked. No, is it? Well, that's funny. Yes. I wonder where the key is. Did, uh, you lock it? Why should I? You're the only one that smokes them. That's right. And I guess I'm the one fellow who can have anything you've got, eh, Dagwood? Huh? That's the way pals like us should be. Yeah, pals, huh? Well, I'm sure going to uh, miss you when you go, George. And I feel the same way about you. But no use worrying about that yet. Huh? No? No, indeed. I'm perfectly contented here. I feel like one of the family, the way you've made me feel. Uh, oh, what did you want to uh, see me about, Dagwood? Well, I just wanted to find out how the play was coming along. Oh, fine, Dagwood, fine. Of course, I am having a little trouble with my villain. Uh, He's just locked the door on his best friend. <laughs> But I like Uncle George. I don't want him to go away. But don't you want just us in our own home, dear? Yes, and Uncle George, too. But why do you like him so? He pays attention to me. Nobody else does since Cookie came. Oh. Oh, oh, my poor darling. I didn't realize I'd been neglecting you. But after Uncle... After Mr. Wickley leaves, we're going to have a picnic. Oh, boy. Well, come on now. Eat your breakfast. Come on. Smell that? What? Bacon. Huh? Good morning, Blondie. Uncle George, after you leave, we're going to have a picnic. After I leave? Whatever made you think I intended doing such a thing? Don't worry, Alexander. Your Uncle George isn't going anyplace. He'll probably give Cookie away when she's married. I got soft-hearted. You mean chicken-hearted. No. All right, if you won't get him out, I will. Oh, no, no, I'll, I'll tell him. George, 
There's something I want to say to you. What? The doorbell's ringing. It, oh, no. I wonder who that could be. Probably some more of your Chicago friends. <laughs> I'll go, so you can't ask them to live with us. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just like a wife, always joking. <laughs> Is this the Bumstead home? Yes, it is. Can I help you? You can't help me, lady. I'm going to help you. Who are you? Sarah Miller, the new maid from the Home Employment Agency. Maid? Oh, oh, I didn't hire any maid. I know you didn't. Mr. Wickley did. He told me... Is there some funny business going on here? Because if there is, and I'm left holding the bag, I'll make trouble. I gave up two good-paying jobs to come here. Even took less money because Mr. Wickley promised me a part in his play. It'll be too bad if I'm left holding the bag. Now I'll go up to my room. Oh, but I don't... I'll find it. It's always the smallest one in the back with one window. And when the curtain came down, you should have heard the audience applaud. Arthur, Arthur, they cried. Did the play make him cry, Uncle George? Oh, no, Alexander. It was a funny play, full of gags. You're very good at gags, aren't you, George? <laughs> Modesty forbid. <laughs> you must tell Dagwood about Sarah Miller. Who's she? Our new servant. Oh, I, I knew... Well, what do you mean? Georgie Porch, he hired a maid for us. Well, I had to. Blondie's been working so hard lately, like a little Trojan, never complaining. I thought if I could get her a servant, Blondie could have more time for herself. I think that was very thoughtful of you, George. Don't you, Dagwood? Uh, as for her wages, well... Oh, don't worry about the money. As soon as my play is produced, I intend to pay her. But she tells me she sews rather well. I think I'll go off and get her some socks to mend. Eh? Try her out. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, oh, you're going someplace? Yes, Dagwood. Oh. I'm going to the rental library and get a novel. And then I'm going to buy a box of chocolates and come home and lie down for the rest of the day. Huh? I have a maid now to do my work for me. Oh. And if I don't happen to care for her cooking, well, the children and I can always eat out. Yeah. Well, I... What right have you got to come into my home and break it up? Now, you get your things. And I've you got as right. much right to be here as you have. You, I huh? work here. And I'd like to see the guy who's going to tell me I don't. What? I was hired to do a job, and I'm going to do it. And everybody in this here house is going to eat my cooking, like it or not. Is that clear? Uh, yeah, I, I guess so. Now, we're going to get along all right if you do as you're told. And the first thing I'm telling you is stay out of my kitchen. Three's $89.50. What do we eat, gold? Telephone service. <laughs> Window pane, two dollars. What's going on here? Oh. oh, I'm sorry, Dad, but Alvin hit one into the outfield that I couldn't catch. Yeah. Uh, everybody's having fun but me. Well, what are you doing? Trying to balance a budget. Only there isn't any balance to budget. You know, Dad, what I've been thinking. Yeah, please, George. Every time you think it costs me money. Well, that's just it. You need more. You should have a raise. Sure, sure. But let's not talk about the impossible. Oh, no, what's impossible? You told me yourself how that speech of yours stunned the convention. Yeah. Well, you don't seem to realize what a thing like that can do for your firm. Uh... Neither does Mr. Dithers, and I'm just the man to tell him. Well, what do you mean? I'm going with you to the office and talk to your boss. When I get through, he'll see my point of view. You think so? I know so. And let me reiterate, Mr. Dithers, a man of Dagwood's capabilities cannot be found every day. A man who has taken over your burdens time and time again, jumped into your place whenever the emergency demanded, represented you at Chicago better than you could have done yourself. Why, he made a speech there, Mr. Dithers, that mark my words will be heard about. And so I say, Mr. Dithers, now is the psychological time to give Dagwood that raise that you must have been planning. And I say again... No, no, don't say it again. I'll give Dagwood the raise. You will? 
Fine, fine, Mr. Dithers. By boosting Dagwood's morale, you've helped yourself and your business. Oh. I guess that's right. When I was a young man, I remember the day my employer gave me a raise. What did you do? I fainted, too. got your raise. Thank you, George. I want to do everything I can, Blondie. Oh, you have. Oh, but... Uh, George, will you please go into your room? I want to have a talk with you. Huh? What, what do you want to talk to George about? About whether or not he and I should have the house painted this year. Oh, uh, yeah. I used to be very happy here, with my little family, in my little home. But now I'm getting so I don't like my home anymore. All the fun of it's gone, and the tidiness and the quiet. I can't even bake cookies for Alexander anymore, because Sarah's in my kitchen. You've made everything different here. Dagwood and I can't sit by the fire alone nights. Daisy can't be in the house with her puppies. And I'm even beginning to feel strange with my little boy because of your influence. I used to be happy with my husband, too. I was proud of him. I loved and respected him. But now I'm getting so I... I don't like him, either. He's not the Dagwood I married now. He's your puppet. You write his speeches. You stop his baby crying. You got his raise. You boss his son. You run his home. Why, he isn't head of the house anymore. You are. So now it comes to the point where I must choose between you and Dagwood. All right. I'm making my choice now before you wreck everything my home stands for. I'm going to stop this merry-go-round you've started. You're going down to the kitchen now and fire Sarah Miller at once. And then you're packing your things, taking Act 3, Scene 1 with you and getting out of my house forever.
Sarah, I am the unwilling bearer of unfortunate tidings. Oh, no. How do you do? I'm looking for one Miss Sarah Miller. Well, that's me. Uh, Miss Miller, I'm Piotr Ilyich Vichina, a representative of William Dillon, the theatrical agent. Uh, George Wickley wrote him about you. Well, I'll be... Don't be dear, Miss Miller. Broadway needs you. Broadway? Yes. You are playing the maid in Mr. Weekly's next production. I can't believe it. Well, the only thing to do then is to get your things and take the first train to this address. Oh, but I haven't got the fare. I spent my last cent on the correspondence course. I'll see the bump steads. No, no. I'll take care of that. Say, that's all right of you. Dear Mommy, I'm not important around here anymore, so I'm going away and join the Army. The Marines. Don't worry, I'm taking the money from my bank. No, you might miss your train. Besides, he knows more about it than you do anyway. Well, I'll write him. You know what I'll say? I have a very good idea. You bet. Well, Broadway, here I come. Oh, hello, Mr. Fiddy. Don't you uh, hello me, Dagwood Bonehead. You're fired. Uh, good and fired. What on earth are you talking about, Mr. Diggers? So you represented me at Chicago better than I could myself, did you? Well... That speech of yours will be heard about, will it? Well, read this, Cicero. Who's it from? The president of the National Architects Association. Dear Mr. Diggers, due to your amazing speech read by your representative at our Chicago convention, you were blacklisted at our board meeting yesterday. Uh huh? And steps are now being taken by the Board of Governors to revoke your license to practice in your state. But, but why? You're asking me, you uh -huh. moron? Uh -huh. Well, listen to this. Uh -huh. We don't need architects in this country. The man on the street can plan his own home. And this one. Why waste iron and steel for construction? Use a mixture of fabricated potato peelings and soy beans. We meant, I mean, I meant we could find a substitute for building materials, like they do with silk and rubber and... And what do you suggest substituting for a lost contract? Murphy read this and canceled. But why? He said he was building an apartment house, not a salad. I'll get it. How do, ma'am? Mr. Dagwood Bumstead, how do you do, sir? I'm Jason Wheeler, sir, of the New Orleans Construction Company. I heard your extraordinary speech at the Chicago Convention, sir. Yeah. It was extraordinary, all right. Oh, oh yeah, y you see. Yes, sir, I do see. In fact, we see in you, sir, an alert young man with revolutionary ideas. Uh -huh. My firm has sent me here, sir, to offer you a contract. We expect you to put new fire into our organization. Fire, eh? Huh. It'll probably burn you right to the ground. You mean a job? Indeed I do, sir. In New Orleans? Well, now, I don't know. I'll be frank with you, Mr. Bumstead. Uh, uh, I have just come from the office of a Mr. Murphy, uh, who has committed himself to give me a contract to build a large apartment house. <laughs> he of John J. Murphy? That's right. Who is this man? Uh, he's my boss. Uh, I mean, uh, my ex-boss. You mean you don't work for him any longer? Why, good, good, fine. 
Because uh, it was only through convincing Mr. Murphy that we were high on you that I managed to get this commitment. That's absurd. Why, it was only through having Bumpster that I managed to lose that commitment. Oh, then uh, you must be O.C. Dithers, huh? Well, I heard about that. <laughs> it's J.C., and I don't believe a word you're saying. Well, I don't pay no never mind of that, Mr. Dithers. Mr. Bumpstead, how about a star to say uh, $65 a week? You mean you won't get that contract unless you have Bumpstead? Oh, Mr. Dithers, I see I shouldn't told you about that. Seventy dollars. Seventy-two fifty. Let's see that commitment. Oh, no, you don't, Mr. Dithers. What I'm giving this job is my business. Seventy-five. All right, Dagwood. I'll pay you seventy-five a week, but yes. not a cent more. You're really not worth that much. Dagwood, you better take Mr. Dithers' offer. No, Blondie. I'm taking Mr. Wheeler's. So. I'm not worth $75 a week, huh? Dagwood! Well, let me tell you something, Mr. J.C. Dithers. Wait! Dagwood, wait, there's something else. You keep what? out of this, Barney. I'm gonna show you that I'm not the namby-pamby you've been thinking I was. And when I get through with Mr. J.C. Dithers, I'm gonna get that George Whitley and that maid, and I'm gonna throw him out of the house. Well, what's the matter with you? My life savings are gone. Oh, never mind, darling. I'll get your money back for you. Well, yeah. I reckon I'll kind of look around and see how many vans you all need to move to New Orleans. Yeah. Yeah, now, where was I? Oh, now, Mr. J.C. Dithers, you've had me under your thumb ever since I went to work for you at starvation wages. You never gave me a raise of your own free will. I had to beg for one, cringe for one, humble myself like a browbeaten slave. Dagwood, I, listen to me. I, you keep out of this, Blondie. This is my affair. Now, I'd rather work for Mr. Wheeler for $50 a week than you for 200 you slave driver. Now, at least I won't have to work on, on nights and Sundays and holidays the way you made me. And maybe I'll be appreciated, not treated like an insignificant worm. I'm through with you. Clean through. Mr. Dithers, you're a rat! Yeah. That's the way you want me to talk up, isn't it, honey? Not exactly. Huh? That suits me, Blondie. <coughs> well, hmm. at least we still have Cookie. I'll take care of the baby, Blondie. Who is that? I, I, I think it's... It's George Whitley, Mr. Dithers, the man from New Orleans. The man who wrote that speech. The man who's done all Dagwood's thinking until he hasn't any of his own mind left. That's why he said those dreadful things to you. Why, I ought to jail him for attempted extortion. I ought to have him whipped in public. I ought Mr. to... Mr. Dithers, for her sake, take pity. Should this innocent flower suffer for the mistakes oh, of an stop erring... That. And stop using my baby for one of your cheap theatrical tricks. Dagwood didn't know it was George, Mr. Dithers. You know he wouldn't do a thing like that. And he wouldn't have said the things he did to you if that man weren't responsible. Now, you know our position as well as we do now, Mr. Dithers. Our obligations and, and how important it is for Dagwood to have work. But I'm not going to ask you to forgive him. I'm not even going to ask you to take him back. But, but if you don't, Mr. Dithers, you... You are a rat! Well, I might consider... Uh... Oh, so I'm a rat, am I? Oh, now, don't pay any attention to Blondie, Mr. Dither. She didn't mean it. What? Well, I'm a fool to do it, but you can come back. Huh? At $35 a week. $35 a week? But I was getting 60. 35. 40. 42, 50. 35. Take it or leave it. He'll take it. How do you do? I'd like to see Dagwood Bumstead. Oh, I suppose you have a job for him, too. Well, how did you guess? Oh, uh, which one of you gentlemen is Dagwood Bumstead? And I am. Well, I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Bumstead. Huh? We read your speech in the NAA magazine, and I want to congratulate you. All right, now you offer him a job because of his revolutionary theories. Well, say, you all must be psychic around here. I am offering him a job with the government. You're not an FBI man. He's not going to prison. Oh, I'm William Lawrence of the Priorities Board. We're setting up a special division. 
to study the building theories advanced in your speech, and we want you for that division, Mr. Bumstead. Yeah? <laughs> the country needs intelligent men who realize how important it is for the government to utilize every piece of iron and steel for victory. Our greatest need today is men who can build things rapidly with a minimum amount of raw material. Now, this has gone far enough. Look here, my good man. I know you're working in cahoots with Bumstead and Wickley. Now, I've given Bumstead his job back at $35 a week. What do you say we call it quits? What's he talking about? Who is this man? I'm J.C. Dithers. And you're a phony. Am I? Well, perhaps you'd better read this, Mr. Dithers. It's from Washington, all right. They can't do this to me. Why, I raised Bumstead like a son, taught him everything he knows. I'm a loyal citizen. I pay my taxes, I buy defense bonds. I'm giving to the government, and what's the government doing to me? It's taking my most promising man, the white hope of my firm, the only man in my organization with revolutionary ideas. Mr. OPM man, you can go right back to Washington and tell your priorities, division. What? that they can't have Bumstead. Yes, but you... Can't you keep that baby quiet? Cookie, your father's future's at stake. Please be quiet. Bumstead can't be so valuable to you if you only pay him 35 a week. Who said I'm only paying him 35 a week? You did. I did not. Since when does a junior partner get $35 a week? Stop that baby! Go get Uncle George, quick. Come back, Uncle George. Mommy wants you to stop cooking crying. How would you like to be important around the house, Alexander? Like I used to be? Oh, much more than you used to be. I'll tell you how to stop cooking from crying. You will? Mm-hmm. You hold her in your arms, and you blow on her ear. Ever so gently. And she'll stop? Uh-huh. Of course, you mustn't let anybody see you do it. Thanks for telling me. I really appreciate that. Well, oh, you're not Can't arbitrary. Do that. Not either. Oh, Wait, no priority for you ever telling me that that you need an organization of yours. Who's got a new organization? Please, Lord, you stop that baby. She'll stop in a minute. Let me handle this. Here, this is a business, and I am the priority board. This is here, this is a business, and I am the priority board. You can't have a man, no matter what you say or do. The government has first. The government has first.